Following the launch of the iPad Pro, even basic typing tricks like trackpad mode and cursor movement bred through Twitter with viral shock and delight. Years old, many people still simply didn't know they existed. Well, let's fix that now. I'm Renee Ritchie. Welcome back to Vector. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's hit this. Now, I'm not going to go over the real simple stuff like magnifier and copy paste, which I think are pretty well known to most of you by now. But if you're not familiar with them, just drop me a line in the comments and I'll happily help you out. What I am going to do is go over some of the lesser known, harder to find keyboard gung fu and help you take your typing to the next level. I usually try to do these things in some semblance of order, but this one got so much attention lately, I'm going to front load it fast so you get to it first. If you're using the virtual keyboard, you can quickly switch to a virtual trackpad, which makes precisely placing the cursor much, much easier. Just touch and hold the spacebar, and then swipe your finger over the trackpad to move the cursor. On an iPhone with 3D Touch, you can also press firmly to switch to trackpad mode anywhere on the keyboard, and press again to switch between moving the cursor and text selection. On an iPad, you can just use two fingers directly on the text anywhere on the screen to move the cursor and double tap to switch between moving and text selection. It's so good, it kind of makes you wish external keyboards had a way to support that functionality as well, and for more than just text. There are a ton of settings that you can toggle for the keyboard. Launch settings, tap on general, tap on keyboard, and then just go to town. Auto caps, auto correction, spell check, caps lock, predictions, and more. For most people, most of the time, the defaults are not only fine, they're better. But if they're not for you, at least not right now, then just do them up the way that you like them. If you don't need to enter a bunch of digits, like for a telephone number, or a bunch of symbols, like for fake cursing, touch the number or symbol button and keep your finger on it. Then slide your finger up to the number or symbol you want to enter. Let go. The keyboard will instantly switch back to text mode. And the same works for shift if you want to enter just one uppercase letter. If though, you want to shout at someone who is wrong on the internet, then you don't need to hit the shift button for each and every letter. Instead, tap the shift button twice, type in your text, and then tap shift again to go back to normal. Typing the letter E is as easy as tapping it. Typing E accent gu, E accent grave, E accent circumflex is almost as easy. Just touch and hold down on the letter to get a pop-up with alternate characters. Then slide over to the alternate character you want to enter and let go. On 3D touch iPhones, you even get taptic feedback for each character, which is so cool that like sound, it feels like it should be an option for the entire keyboard by now. If you have an external keyboard connected to your iPad, you get all sorts of useful keyboard shortcuts along with it. That includes classics like Command C to copy and Command V to paste, even Command Tab to switch between recent apps and Command Space for Spotlight. But you also get some special ones like Command H to return to the home screen. Just hold down the Command key in any app or in any part of the system to see a list of shortcuts available right there. If you type some text, delete some text, or even paste some text and later regret it, you can undo it. Just shake, shake, shake it off your iPhone, and then tap undo or redo. Yeah, it's weird, but it works. What works even better though is a dedicated undo key, which only the plus size, but strangely not the max size iPhones have, and only in landscape. It would be really great to see that everywhere. If you're a walk-in typer with your iPhone, coffee in one hand, texting in the other, or if you just prefer typing one-handed, you can offset the keyboard right or left to make it easier. Tap and hold the globe button, then tap the left or right biased keyboard button. Type away, and when and if you want to go back, just hit the big arrow on the other side. On smaller iPads, basically the 10.5 inch and under, you can undock and move the keyboard and split it into left and right sides for easier thumb typing. Just touch and hold the keyboard button, bottom right, tap undock to release it, or split to separate it. You can redock the keyboard to the bottom and merge it back into a single keyboard at any time by doing the same thing. And yeah, Apple seems to think the new 11 inch and all the 12.9 inch iPads are simply too big for this feature. But almost anyone who knows about it and tries it just thinks it's broken. And here, consistency really is a user feature. D I C T A T I O N. As improved as the iPhone and iPad virtual keyboards are, sometimes it's still easier to talk than to type. Dictation has gotten better over the years, including streaming transcriptions and offline speech to text. Just tap the mic button and start talking. You can even say punctuation, like period. 
new line, new paragraph, and even all caps to go back to shouting. If you need to be totally hands-free, you can even tell Siri to send a new message or email or take a note and then just start dictating. Sadly, there's still no emoji support, just smiley and frowny emoticons. Frowny face emoticon. You can quickly apply bold, italics, underline, or strike through in any app that supports rich text formatting. Tap the arrow key on the menu, then tap the B slash U option in the pop-up menu, and then choose the formatting you want to apply. You can also change the indent level or in mail, the quote level in replies. For a while now, you've been able to attach a photo, video, or file right from within the email app. Just tap where you want to insert it, tap the arrow on the pop-up menu, and then tap insert photo or attachment. Choose the photo, video, or file you want to insert, and you're done. If you're not sure whether you're using the right word, cite the site in sight, because English is really the worst language. You can pull up a dictionary and check. Double tap to select the word you want to look up, tap look up to get the dictionary definition, Wikipedia entry, and often news and even media related to that word. iOS can actually support multiple dictionaries as well, so you can go to settings, general, dictionary, and check out the list. If you tap the spacebar twice, iOS will automatically insert a period for you and capitalize the next letter. That's a great time saver, but what's even better is that you can set up shortcuts of your own. Launch settings, tap on general, tap on keyboard, tap on shortcuts. It's a great way for you to handle words that you commonly misspell or to insert anything you type frequently, like GML for your Gmail address or S shrug for the ASCII shrug. If you just don't like the built-in quick type keyboard, you can get alternate typing methods like SwiftKey or T9, productivity boosters like Grammarly, or even fun stuff like Bitmoji. Launch the App Store, search for the keyboard you want, and download it. Then launch Settings, tap on General, tap on Keyboards, tap on Keyboards, tap on New Keyboard, and choose the keyboard you downloaded. Sometimes you might also have to give her permission to access its app for larger resources like images. And yeah, even if they have gotten better over the years, that still makes third-party keyboards kind of kludgy on iOS. Once you've got a few keyboards installed, paging between them becomes arduous. So instead, just touch and hold the globe button until the keyboard selector pops up, slide to the keyboard you want to switch to, and let go. Super fast. Apple's version of autocorrect is now part of the QuickType keyboard system, which uses machine learning not just to figure out what and how you like to type, but to crowdsource popular slang and expressions so that it's able to suggest those before you even know you want to use them. If it all goes wrong though, and correct something you never wanted corrected, just hit the backspace key and iOS will pop up what you originally typed. Tap on it and it'll be unautocorrected and restored right before your eyes. If you're interested in how all of that works, the machine learning, the artificial intelligence, the algorithms, then check out Brilliant, a problem-solving website that teaches you to think like, well, the future. Instead of passively listening to lectures or even videos, you get to master concepts by solving fun and challenging problems. And Brilliant provides the tools and frameworks you need to tackle just exactly those kinds of challenges. Go to brilliant.org vector and get started today. Thanks Brilliant and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. I've done videos before on Safari tips, security and privacy tips and more, but typing tips are some of my favorites. They just accelerate me through the iPhone and iPad so fast. If you've got any favorites though, anything that makes your iPhone or iPad usage just fly, let me know. Hit like, hit subscribe, and then hit up the comments below. And thank you so much for watching.